you know, Bob Jones also said things that you could say have come true, but what were the meaning of what he said? I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs winning the Super Bowl a few years ago, there's going to be a revival. Mm -hmm. That was a prophetic word. The Kansas City Chiefs did win the Super Bowl many, many years after he predicted they would. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood of them winning it was, well, maybe one day they will, you know. Um, so that was not beyond the possibility that they could. Mm -hmm. But when they did, did revival happen? What is revival? What do the words mean? And I was actually, because I heard heard this prophetic word a lot from a lot of people in the US, I was curious enough to go and ask Bob Jones what it meant and what he meant and what has happened. Did it happen according to how he thought it was going to happen? Mm -hmm. Now, you could look and say, well, there are a few things that have happened since the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, was that just for Kansas? Was that for the whole of the US? Was that for a particular town? Was that for a particular person? Who knows? But I would say since that came about, which was what, 2019 or something around there? 20 or before, oh. maybe? You know, I know they won it last year and they've won it since, but they hadn't won it for a number of years up until that point. When it happened, would you say there's been revival in the US? Mm -mm. Probably not on a broad stage. Now, there have been some meetings. So there's the college yeah. meetings that happened that people say, ah, oh, revival. Yes. Well, that, was, that was the several years after the initial thing of winning the Super Bowl. So actually, could you say that was the fulfillment of that? I don't think you could genuinely say that. Now, when I talked to Bob Jones about it, as part of the Cloud of Witnesses, he, he had a very interesting conversation. And one of the things he said is, look, I use words to convey something that God was trying to get over. And I use the words that I knew to try and convey that. Would I use mm. the same words now? No. Because as soon as you word, use the word revival... That has a very specific meaning for some people and a very general meaning for others. Uh -huh. They used to have revival meetings. Well, what were they? Well, they were meetings hoping for revival. It didn't mean just because there was a revival meeting, there was a revival. And what is a revival? A revival from one sense would depend on what stream of theology you come from. Because reviving something means something's dead and it's going to be brought back to be to life. Now, that's not the general Christian meaning for revivals. So you might say that Toronto was a revival type thing. Or you might say that the Cane Ridge revival, where some certain supernatural manifestations happened in the sort of Wild West era. I mean, there are lots of things that are called revivals. People have written books about them, which other people would say, well, that was a renewal or that was a reformation. You know, there are all sorts of words that are used to describe certain things. Bob Jones sort of indicated that he would have not used that word because people had an expectation of something was going to happen, which was not actually what God was conveying. And the scope of it was not clear within the word. So it was not, people could read into it, all sorts of things. So Bob Jones, what he did say to me was, why are people still looking to words I spoke years ago when they can be engaging God for themselves to get his word for them now? Which is you know, an interesting perspective because a lot of those people who prophesied like that did not teach people to prophesy like that or to hear god for themselves they generally created a a need for more prophetic meetings and more of their prophecies i went to some mm -hmm. of the wimber meetings with paul kane bob jones mm -hmm. john paul jackson and, and others 
you know, and it always seemed to be the same sort of people who got picked out to have a prophetic word over them or a weird word, like a word of knowledge, which was so cryptic. It was like, what on earth is that talking about? And some of those guys like Paul came, they, they spoke in cryptic language often when it came to those type of meetings. And it was sort of, I went there and I wasn't impressed, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really impressed because it it just no if if one of them picked out me and told me something about my life which no one else knew then I would have been impressed but it always seemed to be the same sort of leaders who got picked out with some word now I know there are words of knowledge which are very accurate and the holy mm -hmm. spirit does give people words and confirmation to somebody by telling someone of something that no one knows and i know that has happened and does happen mm -hmm. and there are some people who function seemingly in that word of knowledge stuff quite accurately generally to get people's attention i think um because they need to be to have some sort of measure of faith in something that god is going to say to them and that mm -hmm. does give them that because no well, no one could have known that it must be god and I think that sometimes that is the reason, you know, to, to do it. Um, but I, I think when Bob Jones spoke to me, it was very much, you know, people should not be list, trying to listen to words. I spoke 10, 20 years ago when God is still speaking today and wants to speak through them. Mm -hmm. But he did convey that he would not have used the words that he used and he prophesied through his own understanding of what he thought God was trying to say. God did not dictate the words to him to say. That was what he was trying to get over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people, you know, thus saith the Lord, and then they start speaking. And it's really odd that quite often they speak in King James language. Mm -hmm. And it's like, does God honestly speak that way? Well, not to me. <laughs> he doesn't speak in old English to me or in <laughs> these and thous and everything else. And it is really funny when people sort of use that tone and they change their voice into a King James voice sometimes as if God's they're now using God's voice rather than their own. And it is a little bit funny sometimes. <laughs> and you do get people who then get messed up in what they're saying. You know, I've heard I've heard people quote that Moses built the ark when they were prophesying mm. something. Well, obviously Moses didn't build the ark, but, you know, but they said it. Now, does that nullify every bit that they were talking about? No, not really, because you have to discern. There's a discernment that's needed mm. to weigh up what's being said to see is what's being said aligned to the father's heart and does it resonate with you inside and then you can sort of pass over the fact that we prophesy in part and we prophesy in sense through our own language and through our own being and therefore it might not be 100 percent totally accurate and it isn't a dictation of god speaking god didn't take over our voice and force us to say certain things he might have encouraged us to speak out but that's very different you know um and so you know it it mm. is interesting um when you look at prophecy where does it come from well if it's coming from the holy spirit then does that mean that the holy spirit has seen the future and can say this is going to happen well possibly but you only need to know a very small point ahead of the future to say something before it's happened you know it doesn't mean that the future is fixed you mm -hmm. could have observed something and then said something to someone who's not yet seen that yet so there's different ways of looking at time space miracles prophecy and everything else my view is in all the time that i've been prophesied over which has probably been i don't know loads of times in my life I only really resonate with about three of those things as actually being God totally speaking to me in a way that absolutely affirmed that I knew it was God. 
the rest of it were mostly nice things encouraging things which weren't bad you know god loves you and you know this i mean it's not bad it's true but is it a prophetic word that's coming from god that's going to change your whole life you know i think looking back i had a prophetic word back in 1992 that prepared me for something that was coming that i was going to move and plant a church somewhere and i do believe that definitely was god and i resonated mm -hmm. with it and it encouraged me that i could step out and do that when when the opportunity came around because i remembered the word god spoke to me specifically about a number of things that were going to take place when i moved and and what i should do in the move that was quite interesting and that came as a as an out of the blue thing i was painting my house at the time and i was up a ladder and all of a sudden there was this download of stuff but i didn't have any idea and so i wrote it down and you know shared it with a couple of other leaders and they sort of says well it sounds like god but we don't think it's for us and we don't think it's for here so it must be for you so you go away and see what god wants you to do with it which is what i did and i did use that word to give me some guidance over the next 10 15 years and it did actually because god sort of gave me this you need to be careful of this person and i'm like i don't even know who that person is but actually in the end that person uh, you know the couple actually um the warning was correct you know and there were a number of things like that you know um, and you know god spoke to me you know in 2017 and told me i had three years to get ready for a shift coming so sometimes god does speak to you to prepare you but he didn't tell me what the shift was in very specific terms mm -hmm. he just prepared me that i was then looking for okay do whatever you need to do to get me ready for whatever's going to come you know that was my attitude to it it wasn't sort of you know absolutely totally clear because i think sometimes if it is absolutely totally clear then we try and make it happen mm -hmm. <laughs> rather than being inspired that god is wanting to do something and i'm going to be open to follow that into the mm -hmm. future you know so there's a there's <coughs> a lot around prophecy people who call themselves prophets that i think are very highly dubious if you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.